Singapore is amongst the richest nations in the entire world. It is home to a huge financial industry, and it is the only country to ever receive a credit rating of triple A in the entire Asian continent. Its immense success has brought in billions to even trillions of dollars worth of wealth. With so much wealth, just how much does Singapore really have? And how is it handling the massive amount of wealth its nation holds? Well, the country publishes three official public information about its largest wealth sources. The first is from its official foreign reserves, which are handled by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. These are estimated to be around 289 billion US dollars or 403 billion Singaporean dollars as of the latest data available from official publications. The second comes from Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is namely the Government of Singapore Investment Corporation or GIC for short. And Temasek Holdings, or simply Temasek. The GIC is one of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the entire world. Its assets are estimated to be far larger than most countries' annual gross domestic product. Its official estimate as of 2022 is around 690 billion US dollars, or around 967 billion Singaporean dollars. Temasek, on the other hand, is not particularly a sovereign wealth fund, although it kind of functions the same way as how wealth funds work. It only diverges from a traditional sovereign wealth fund due to its style of investments. But either way, Temasek is still owned by the Singaporean government. Temasek alone is estimated to have over 403 billion Singaporean dollars worth of assets and 630 billion dollars worth of assets under management. Collectively, all of these three make up about the largest share of Singapore's overall wealth, and through basic math, these come to more than a trillion Singaporean dollars, making its fund worth far more than most developed countries' annual GDP. With such a huge bulk of wealth, this brings us to the very question, how is Singapore managing all this money? Is the country using it to develop national interests, or is it using the money to diversify the economy so that it does not fully rely on its borders? Well, to understand all of these, we will need to take a look at each of these funds and what they are being used for. The first is the official foreign reserves. As we noted earlier, is handled by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. The reserves that it holds have actually gone down recently, from its peak around 2021 when it had more than 560 billion Singaporean dollars, coming down to where it is today at only 403 billion dollars. This is a figure consisting of three factors. The first two factors are special drawing rights reserves positioned on the international monetary finance. These two hold a small share of just around $10 billion. The remaining factor comes directly from Singapore's gold and foreign reserves. This is as simple as it is. It is composed of gold and foreign currencies. It could be United States dollars, Chinese yuan, or any other form of money from abroad. The use cases of having foreign reserves vary from country to country, but on the basic definition, it is used to back the balance payments of one's country, or it could be used to influence their own exchange rate of the Singaporean dollar and to maintain financial markets. But in Singapore's case, it is also used to attain its goal as a destination with a good credit market. Moving on to the GIC, its massive sovereign wealth fund. This wealth manager of Singapore's money is not just amongst the best when it comes to amassing wealth, but it is also one of the best performing funds in the entire world. Over the past 20 years, the fund has not suffered a massive failure on its investments, yet has seen its nominal returns to be over 6.8% over 20 years. Its global reach, on the other hand, marks its way with offices from Tokyo to London to New York. Its entire fund is estimated to be around 966 billion Singaporean dollars. This fund is then diversified across numerous categories. It has stakes across developed and emerging market equities to bonds and real estate and even private equity. Although official publications are very difficult to find on what they individually invested in, what we have found so far, however, is that amongst the largest rounds of investments the GIC has joined in is to help fund companies such as Falcon X, Traveloka, Ridi, and more, as these are just amongst its startup fundings and the largest bulk of its investments is directly tied to the United States, where the U.S. is designated 37% of its entire investment fund. Finally, Temasek Holdings, a company that is quite very special among the three. Although it has far shorter assets than GIC, its investments are amongst the best. 
Unlike GIC, whose investment is positioned majority in Western nations, Temasek holds its position back home in Singapore and across Asia. They hold around 63% of their entire assets in the Asian continent. With an investment bulk of about 403 billion Singaporean dollars of assets, it led to them to become major owners of gigantic companies. They own 29% of DBS Group Holdings, one of the largest banks in Southeast Asia and also one of the largest in the entire world. This company alone holds assets worth more than half a trillion US dollars. Temasek also owns 17% of Standard Chartered, which has been one of the United Kingdom's biggest financial brands for decades. Aside from financial services, they also own numerous local-based transportation and industrial businesses, from PSA Singapore to Singapore Power Limited, Smart Corporation, and even a 55% stake in Singapore Airlines. The company is also known for having ownership and funding internationally based companies across the world. They have a stake in Indonesian-based GoTo Group, US-based DoorDash, Roblox and Airbnb to China-based Metuin, Tencent, and Alibaba. And these are just amongst its biggest names that it has stakes in. Obviously, as the company holds $403 billion worth of assets, its influence, both locally and internationally, is vast. So, these three are, in summary, the drivers of introducing Singapore to the rest of the world. Locally, they also contribute a massive amount of money to the entire Singaporean government. This is done directly through the government's revenues, money it generates every year. These are tied down to these funds as they individually bring parts of their profit back to the government, which directly benefits every Singaporean. As of the latest estimate on their contribution for 2022, it is reported that it will be over 21.6 billion Singaporean dollars, a massive amount because not only is it paving the way for Singapore to have an extra stream of income, but it is also slowly and surely growing its own assets. Because of good management that has been proven for decades already, it is going to be more than ever sure that these funds are going to continuously grow. Their stake will more than likely become amongst the largest, if not probably the largest in the entire world. This is because Singapore will continue to become the financial capital of the world. It will also be more crucial as the entire Southeast Asian region takes place as one of the fastest growing places in the entire world. Once the entire Southeast Asian bloc becomes developed, Singapore will enormously benefit directly as it will play a huge role in ensuring these will all take place. Now, to address some of the misunderstandings amongst most people outside Singapore, the question of why this even matters stands. Well, these funds are crucial. Yes, indeed, there are many sovereign wealth funds, sources of money, or whatever means, have paved the way for countries after countries. The Middle East is known for its big money, and developed Western nations have their own. They use their money to continuously grow it and to help diversify their economies, such as the Middle East to help become dependent on its oil and gas industry. Singapore, however, as we understand it, is different. Singapore's wealth fund indeed stands today as a driver to make Singapore continuously become rich, and it, of course, wants to place investments so it would, at the end of the day, earn back whatever it bets on. The difference is strategically due to Southeast Asia. Unlike developed nations or the Middle East, Singapore is in the center of a developing region. That is not to say that the Middle East is also in the same boat, but Southeast Asia is far different from oil-rich countries. Southeast Asia is home to one of the largest populations on the entire planet. It too holds one of the best, if not actually the best places for opportunity. Southeast Asia, if you have not heard of it, has become the single best destination for developing market investments. Singapore's role in pushing these countries, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and others are vital. Vital in helping grow them. Vital in helping create innovation. Singapore's wealth is huge, and its opportunity to both profit from its regional home and help boost its own economy is going to be one of the biggest stories in the coming decades. Anyway, let us know what you think.